Hi, I'm Frances Moffat. I'm a freelance illustrator and today I'm going to be talking about resilience and the creative process. My illustration work is defined by bright colour and bold pattern. Its focus is usually the female figure and is very fashion driven. The majority of my client work is across publishing, editorial and live drawing. But today I will be talking about an illustration for product commission that took me outside of my comfort zone and helped me develop my resilience as an artist. To be a creative is to be constantly in a cycle of maintaining resilience amid disruption, riding out the peaks and valleys of the act of creation. There's been a lot of discussion of the word resilient in recent years too, and it has become something of a buzzword. But what exactly is it, and how as creatives can we develop this quality to enable us to better cope with and respond to the challenges of a creative career? There are two dictionary definitions for the word resilience. One is the ability to be happy, successful, etc. again after something difficult or bad has happened and the second is the ability of a substance to return to its usual shape after being bent, stretched or pressed. So firstly, let's look more closely at that first definition. As a freelance illustrator, it can easily feel like difficult or bad things are regularly happening to you, both in terms of the work you are creating and your professional experience. A self-initiated project that began with passionate enthusiasm and a conviction that this was the best idea ever gradually begins to lose momentum and you can't really remember why you started the project in the first place. Or maybe you've done a big promo mail out of your work to potential clients and two months later you haven't heard anything back from anyone. At times like these it feels difficult to keep creating and being creative if you aren't getting any positive feedback or affirmation from the outside world. So that's why it's important to develop resilience as however successful you are, or however successful you become, you'll never get 100% constant positive feedback and affirmation from the outside world. So now let's look at the second meaning of the word resilience in a metaphorical way. The ability of a substance to return to its usual shape after being bent, stretched or pressed. So let's imagine you're the substance. What qualities would you need to develop to go through this transformational process without it being painful and being bent and stretched? Does sound quite painful. The cyclical nature of the creative journey means that this process is a never-ending one. There will never be an end point that you reach as an artist when you are done or arrived at some final destination. It's always going to be a work in progress. And for a long time in mainstream discourse we have been sold the idea that this process is painful. We are all familiar with the cliche of the tortured artist suffering to create their art, but it doesn't have to be this way. Expressing and embodying frustration, anger and resistance through the creative process and the business of being a freelancer, firstly, is completely unenjoyable and secondly, only serves to block the very thing that you want more of, which is creative flow and inspiration. So as a freelance creative, what can you do to embrace the ups and downs and disruptions of creating your art and navigating a career? As a freelancer, the one constant is change. So in order to successfully cope with change, you need to be able to adapt. The energy of creativity is open and expansive and limitless. So trying to use the opposite energy to achieve this state, controlling, rigid, restrictive energy, is never going to work. The answer to this dilemma is to think of yourself as being amorphous. So this doesn't mean not having a shape at all. It just means having a shape that isn't fixed so that you can move through the challenges you encounter with fluidity and flow. It's not to say you shouldn't have an idea of what you want your work or career to look like, but make it a loose idea. This means being curious and open to change, and if something doesn't work out as you expected, being able to graciously move on to the next thing rather than dwelling on what you perceive as a failure. Sometimes resilience is not in fact going back to a previous state, but moving forward to a new one in a perpetual cycle of renewal. In my career as a freelance illustrator, one way in which I've been able to embody this growth mindset is to be open-minded when approached by clients for a brief that's outside of my comfort zone and that I would not necessarily have thought I was suitable for. A time recently that I had to put this mindset into practice was when Skint, a skate brand, approached me to design a skate deck for them. My initial thought was, hmm, not sure if I can do that. I didn't know if my work was a fit for the product's audience, and I also didn't think that my work was similar to the aesthetic of most skateboard designs I'd seen up until that point. However, despite, despite these doubts, I said yes, as it was an interesting brief, and I felt excited by it for the very reason that I felt nervous. It was something I hadn't done before. 
and so I embarked on the design process, familiar in that the design process has the same stages, whatever you are designing, so that's research, thumbnailing, roughs and sampling, but unfamiliar in that I had considerations as designing an image for a skateboard presented a whole new range of challenges. For example, the dimensions for the illustration were very narrow, as they had to fit on the skateboard, and I couldn't have focal points on the illustration in the areas where the wheels were fixed with screws, so that also presented a problem. I also had to make myself familiar with colour separations, as the design was going to be screen printed onto the board. This meant having to construct my illustration in a new way, and also pare back the detail, as I was limited to four colours. But eventually, I arrived at a design that both myself and the client were happy with, and you can see it here. At the end of the process, I wasn't the same illustrator I was before. My shape had changed a little bit, and that was a good thing. I now had a knowledge of new market sector, skateboards, a greater understanding of how my illustration could be applied to products, and I understood colour separations and how I could adapt my work for screen printing. I also had a sense of achievement in that I'd overcome challenges, done something different, and completed a project that was entirely new to me. The thing about resilience is the only way to build it is by doing. You can't think yourself into being more resilient. As a creative, you need to consistently put yourself in situations where your practice is somewhat disrupted so you can build your resilience muscle. And it doesn't have to be anything big. It could just be sending an email to a potential client who you think is a bit out of your league, or committing to writing one blog post a fortnight on your website. It's the small incremental steps done consistently over time that lead to lasting change and enable you to gracefully shape shift in order to stay creative, inspired and developing as an artist. Ultimately, as a creative, I don't think that I've ever felt ready for any new opportunity when it's come up. And realising that and being okay with it, but not acting upon that discomfort and saying no to opportunities that push me outside of my comfort zone has really helped me to become more resilient. Creativity thrives and flourishes in that space between where you are and where you want to be, between the known and the unknown. Embrace it. Thank you.